welcome to the studio. Today I'm going to go through the actual beginning of our process. Before I've just brought up a template that I've made previously and it's been wonderful to actually just go through that and just let the creative process flow. But today I'm going to show you how I put together that template step by step. Now the first thing I do is I actually get some MIDI tracks and some audio tracks and some auxiliaries. Okay, so what we're going to do is we can either go track, new, or you can see that the shortcut is command shift N. And I'm going to do command shift N, which you should see on your screen. And I'm going to make a number of MIDI tracks and audio tracks. Now, there is a shortcut to this as well. If you hold down command and go down arrow, you can go and choose the type of track. I want MIDI. And at the moment, you can see the actual number of tracks that you want is highlighted. So you can just put in eight, eight new MIDI tracks. Now, before I press create, you can either press plus over here, and it will come up with a new one, or you can go command shift down arrow, and that does exactly the same thing. Now, the more things you can do on the keyboard, the less your hand moves about and the quicker you can be. So the quicker your workflow is, the less you have to think about your technology and the more the creative juices can flow. Now I want a stereo audio track and I want eight of those, so I'm going to press number eight. Now to change this from mono to stereo or to quad or to 5.1, whatever you want, you hold down command and you go right arrow. Okay, so you can go through and cycle through the types of tracks that you'd like. But I think I just want stereo, eight new stereo tracks. But I also want some auxiliaries. And I'm going to do three auxiliary tracks. So I'm going to go Command Shift Down Arrow. And I want three stereo auxiliary tracks. Create. Bam. And here they all are. The first thing I'm going to do is get my auxiliary tracks right at the very, very top. And just squish them up by holding Shift Option. Do to Selected. And I'm going to solo save these by holding down command and pressing the solo button. Now once again to make things faster, I've already got them highlighted, I can go shift option command and it does it. Shift option means do to all that's selected. Right, there is one track that I forgot to add. Command shift N, stereo, master. Put him right at the very, very top. Okay, so now we have our MIDI's and audios down here, but they're all in blocks. I actually want MIDI, audio, MIDI, audio, MIDI, audio. So I'll just drag it up one by one, pop them into place. Under each corresponding MIDI channel. And there we have MIDI, audio, MIDI, audio, MIDI, audio, MIDI, audio. Okay. For our auxiliaries, these are inserts and these are sends. And you can actually choose what you want showing over here. So if I was to get rid of inserts, get rid of sends, you can see it's much more basic. That's what you may have seen before. But I do want to see our inserts and I do want to see our sends. Very good. Now in the first one, I'm going to put in an instrument. Play. There we go. There's our play. East West Sounds, and it's got nothing loaded at the moment. I'm going to relabel this track to reflect that. Capital letters, play. What I'll do is I'll click this little red button over here, and now without that red button on, if I was to open another virtual instrument, this screen actually stays open, and I wouldn't mind that. I think that would be good for it to stay open. If I had that red button clicked, this screen would disappear as soon as a new virtual instrument appears, or a new plugin or something. The other instrument I want to chuck in here is Omnisphere, and um, I use this quite often. So here we go, Omnisphere, and as you can see, Play is still hiding underneath. He's happy there. And I'm going to do the same thing to that as I did to Play, and I'm going to relabel that with capital letters, Omnisphere. Now in the third auxiliary, I'm going to put in another instrument. Another one by Spectrasonics called Trillium. Great bass module. So we can see there are all those guys there and you can click between them quite happily. There is 
another instrument that I used often, and that is, I'll just put in another auxiliary. By opening contact and then loading in a piano. I use uh, 8 DIO for our Steinway scoring piano and it's a beautiful sounding piano, really quite lovely. Here we go, here's contact. Uh, I'm going to go to the light version, just drag it up there. Bam, there we go. See what I normally do is I'll play an instrument from the MIDI controlled by my keyboard and I will direct that into one of our instruments here. See how they've just automatically popped up. And I'll go into contact, channel one, and that's this fella here, MIDI channel one. Right? And it'll feed into contact. Now, but at the moment, I'll just solo save that and label that as we go. Capital is piano. And just shuffle it up. I don't want it to come out there. I don't want to hear it from there. This track is an auxiliary and it cannot record audio onto the track itself. It's simply a pass through. It's a place for the audio to go through on its way to somewhere else. And the other place that it goes to is right here. Okay, so I need to feed this sound into this audio track so I can record it, print it down. And the way I do that is by sending it to an auxiliary. And uh, I'll just scroll down here. Auxiliary number one. And I'll just give it oh, plus one dB. It doesn't really matter. It's a fairly quiet piano. And then I'm going to go into auxiliary one down here in our mixer. It's unassigned at the moment. Let's send it out. One and two. Auxiliary one, channel one. Auxiliary one, channel two. Meaning it's a stereo auxiliary. It has two different buses. And we have our feed out to the wave track, which is, or the audio track, which is over here. The trick is, I can send it there. It's going to the, it's going to the piano up here, the auxiliary, which it will anyway. But to feed it back out to this audio track here, I have to tell it to receive it. Now that is down here. Plug in, contact, auxiliary one. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Now, I still won't hear anything because I need to click this little button here, Input Monitor. And if you don't have that one, you just press the Record button here, Input Monitor, so we can hear it. Lo and behold, we have a piano. And I'm going to label it as such. Piano Mid. Lowercase because it's the actual MIDI and audio tracks. Now, I'm just going to go Command Backspace and Forward Space. And it's already highlighted, so just press Command C for copy, arrow across, Command V for paste, and WAV. Piano MIDI, piano WAV. Right? Okay, so the next one is play. Now I'm going to assign a number of different instruments to play, and I'm going to do that very quickly. So I'll go the first five channels from two to six. So I'm going to select, hold down Command, the next MIDI track, Command MIDI. I want to assign each of those to play. Now, play also has a number of channels. You can load a number of instruments in there simultaneously. And so I'm going to have MIDI channels 1 to 5 in play. Hold down Shift, Option, Do to Selected, and then then hold down Command, do it in sequence, then go Output, then press Play, Channel 1. And because I held down the Command, it did it in sequence. MIDI channel 2 is going to play 1, MIDI channel 3 is going to play 2, MIDI channel 4 is going to play 3, etc. But once again, we need to bring the audio back from play. So I can press here. Well, there's nothing loaded. I'll just quickly load uh, something quickly. Brass gold. Uh, just do a solo French horn. 1, 1 and 2. OK. OK. Solo French horn. It's coming out play there, but I don't want it because, once again, I can't record it on the auxiliary. It's just a flow through. So I mute that and I make it come out here. Channel 1 and 2 being left and right. But I want to do it to all the five ones sequentially. So I'm going to click on our audio track there. Hold down Command, 
audio, 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 and audio. Shift, Option, do to all selected. Command, do to all selected in sequence. And I'm going to do the input, plug in, play, one and two. So because I said in sequence, it now does it play one and two, play three and four, play five and six, play seven and eight, play nine and ten, etc. Still won't come through because I haven't input monitored it. Okay, now my French horn is coming through on audio two. I'm not going to label that just yet because I don't know what instrument I want to load in there just yet. But I can then output this to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, etc. Now to save me time down the track, I'm just going to hold down Option, which means do to all, and press Input Monitor. And see all of these guys, which do have an input and output assigned, have an input monitor. These guys down the bottom here, this first one I want to feed to Omnisphere. So I'll just go Output, Omnisphere, Channel 1. Now before I go any further, I want to show you Omnisphere. Here are the channels, it goes 1 to 8, so you can get up to 8 channels. However, in this multi, this is where you see all the channels at once. Channel 1, Channel 2, Channel 3, etc. If it goes to Output A, it actually comes out the channel that the Omnisphere is loaded into. Now you can have it loaded into a, an instrument track, in which case it will record it. I'm not interested in doing that. So the only idiosyncrasy I have is that I need to change it to output B, and I'll show you why in a second. And I'll just go through and I'll sequentially do that to all these guys here. Right, okay, so all of those are sequential B, C, D, E. And the reason I did that, the output, is because I'll go down here, the audio, Go to plug-in, Omnisphere. It doesn't have Stereo A on here as an option. Anyway, so the first one you can choose is Stereo B. And I've assigned that out to Stereo B. If you click on number one over here, I don't have anything loaded in there at the moment, so I'll just click on that. Cross-speed overdriver just for now, why not? Just so we can see some sort of sound happening through Omnisphere. Select MIDI, input monitor, and I'll just play something through. I have Omnisphere muted up here. Loud. It's quite loud. And here you can adjust the volume. So that you don't end up with clipping right there. Clipping is a bad thing. You do not want that in your track if you can help it, unless for some reason it sounds okay. In which case anything goes. If it sounds good, it works. That's a general rule. And you can live by that. So I'm just going to label that. Just quickly, Omnisphere 1 mid, WAV, just to remind myself that it's going to Omnisphere. And this one here, Trillion, which I actually didn't relabel. Trillion. I want it to go to Trillion, and it's made by Spectrosonics, so it's working in exactly the same way as Omnisphere. Uh, I've just got to find it. Where is it? It's hiding behind all these guys. I'm going to move my piano onto a separate screen. Say goodbye to the piano for now. Here's Trillium. Load in um, synth bass sweeping scanner. That'll do. Label this one Trillium mid wave. And I should be able to hear that now. Yes, I do. That's wonderful. Right, and I'm going to slide him out of the way as well. I'm going to slide him over here, and I'm going to slide play. Well, no, I'll leave play there for now. The only other thing we need to do, just so we don't have anything else get in the way of our creative path, is we need to create a reverb and maybe even a delay auxiliary. The reason you do that some people will put a reverb directly on their audio tracks, just like this, which you can do, um, and it works. But and you don't want to do that. You want to do it in parallel. So as you see, it's just a very basic Pro Tools reverb in there. I don't, I don't want it there. I don't want to have it in series with the instrument, with the audio file, because whatever I print down here is just always going to have this reverb sitting on top of it, and I can't adjust without actually going into the plugin, how much reverb I want in there. 
Uh, and what if I wanted to add another instrument into the same reverb, into the same room? Because that's what you do. You, you have orchestral instruments, but you have to set them up into a space to provide spatiality, three dimensions. Uh, and reverb is used for depth, so you can actually have things further away and closer to you, depending on how much reverb you pump into it. And you do want to have each of your instruments that are meant to be in the same room sounding like they're coming through the same reverb. And so that's what you do. You feed them all into the same reverb. And you can't do that unless you have one reverb with each of them feeding in. So that's why we don't do in series. We do it in parallel. There's two ways. You can either just make a new auxiliary, stereo auxiliary input, uh, and create. And you can relabel that reverb. I'll delete that for now. Or you can go in here, press on the send. Yes, it says sends. New track, auxiliary, and you can call it straight away. Reverb. With stereo auxiliary input, you can call it a audio track if you like, but we're going to make it an auxiliary input. And it's in samples, that's fine. That's fine. Create next to current track. Well, I will, but then I will move it. There it is, our auxiliary one, which for some reason didn't get called reverb. So I'll just call it reverb with capital letters. Thank you very much. Right now, and hmm, it called itself auxiliary one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and change that in setup IO bus. And this is where all the buses are. See, there's our auxiliary one that it just made by itself. Double click on it. Reverb. There we go. And now it's actually the send is called reverb. And it's coming in on that bus. Now a bus is very important. A bus is an alternative route for your audio to go down. So you have your two standard paths, left and right. And your buses are separate left and right tracks that the audio can run down. It's like a separate highway, a separate lane running down next to the main lane. But the buses, they don't go anywhere until you tell them to go anywhere. So in this particular case, the first bus we've relabeled Reverb. We've got left and right, okay, so it's a stereo bus. We've told it to send out from here, so we've connected the beginning of the bus to the piano audio, and we've selected the end of the bus to go into the reverb. Okay, so it sends all the audio from here into the reverb. And you get this little slider that comes up. So click on that. At the moment, it's feeding nothing into the bus. This is like the gateway. I want to feed that bit in there. Let's just start with nothing and play some piano. Well, there's no reverb connected here at the moment anyway, so let's just change that. Cool spaces. This is also made by East West, and it's a lovely sound. Concert halls. Let's go piano hall. Why not? 3.2 front. Now, dry signal. When you've got a reverb in parallel with your audio signal, you don't need any dry signal in there at all. At all. Because your dry signal is already here on your audio track. So just by putting dry signal in your reverb, you're simply doubling up. So pull it all the way out. So we've got a pre-delay there. Input signal is fine. Wet signal. It's all pretty normal. Very happy with that. So here's our reverb. You can see if there's any signal coming in, it will show there. At the moment, there's nothing going in. It's at the gate, but I'm not letting anything through. As soon as I start pulling that up, look over here and listen with your ears. You can hear it there. Now the reverb's in the, in the hall. There's a lot of depth in there. It sounds like it's a long way away. Follow master pan. I like to always have that 
clicked FMP means follow master panner, which means that when you have the piano over here, here's your panner, left and right. I can pull that around and you can actually see on the auxiliary gateway, you can see that it is moving itself. It's simply mirroring what we're doing on the master channel. If I unclick that, you can do it independently and I can move the main panner and it will still send the entire signal, left and right, to the reverb. It's useful sometimes, but I don't usually do that. You can send it before this, so you can actually mute this channel so that nothing comes through the dry signal whatsoever, but it will still send the signal off to the reverb. And all you're hearing there is a pure reverb. Bring that back in, you can see that you're hearing nothing because it's muted. Okay, it's only sending in, it's only sending in what I tell it to from the volume here. Bring it back to Unity by holding Option and clicking on the volume. Unity is 0 dB. Bring that back to Unity. I can hold down Pre. And I can then actually just pull my volume down, have less and less dry signal, it's further away, pull it up, and I literally brought our piano closest to us. But you can do that in a uh, the reverse way as well, by not having pre, having lots of reverb, it's distant, bring it closer, by pulling the reverb out. But generally, in real life, there's still reverb in the room, it's not like there's no reverb. So you can do it very effectively by pulling our volume in and out from the audio channel. Distant, close, just like that. So that's how you use a reverb auxiliary. And you solo save that as well because you want to be able to click solo on here and play that. And you want to still be able to hear the reverb effect that you have. Say I unsolo save that. I can only hear my audio track here and not the reverb. Reintroduce the reverb. Now delay is set up in exactly the same way, but I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to create an audio, sorry, an auxiliary stereo track. I'm going to call it delay. I'm going to feed in from is one I prepared earlier, one called delay, and I'm going to send it out via there. Feed in a bit of delay. Now at the moment, my delay has nothing loaded, so I have to load a delay into it. Uh, let's just go to H delay. No waves. Delay has to move. And I'm going to load just a ping pong. Right. Solo safe delay, just like I did before. You can see that this is white, which means this send that I'm seeing here is the one that's white. That's my reverb, that's my delay. I don't need to follow the master panel with this fella here because it's more of an effect than a spatiality thing. And there is our delay. Pull it out. And the more you send into it, the more intense the effect. So a delay is useful with some things. So right now I am not going to have any delay going to it. So no send. Goodbye. So there you have it. We've set up our session. It's all ready to go. Basically everything is loaded, ready for me to be creative. One more thing I need to do is have a meter. It's good to see where you're up to. That's where you want to average. Your RMS should be sitting around about there. So you come sitting just below it. But with multi-tracking, the more instruments you add, the more uh, the higher your RMS will be. You're peaking. You don't want it to be over minus 10. 
uh, minus six maximum 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 this is a very very handy little doodad uh, and this is the um, k20 based on uh, film and tv sort of scoring i'm just going to move him away into a different spot where i can see it and you don't so it doesn't clutter up space and there we have it we're ready to play